G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography and in this video I'm going to give you some of my first impressions on the recent Lumix G9 firmware update 2.4. But before we start, if this is your first visit to my channel, be sure to subscribe while you're here. And if you appreciate the time I spend making these videos, you might like to show your support by buying me a coffee. You'll find the link in the information below. Now this video really is about my first impressions of the new firmware. I'm not going to give you a detailed demonstration of the update process. There were plenty of YouTubers who wanted to be first out of the gate on this one, so by the time I even got out of bed that day there were already plenty of very good videos out there. And to be honest, the instructions on the Panasonic webpage itself are very good. So I am going to take a brief look at those, and I want to point out just a couple of things that might help if you're yet to do your firmware update. So we start on the firmware update page and I'm putting the link in the information below. After you read through the new features, click on firmware download and that takes you to the next page where you have to be careful to click on the correct link for the G9 upgrade. Now it makes sense to just click the download button so the file can start loading while you read the instructions. The first page tells you how to transfer the file to your SD card and here's the first thing I want to point out. Every guide I've looked at showed people putting their SD card into the SD card slot in their computer. But my SD card slot stopped working a year ago, so I have to connect my Lumix to the computer via a USB cable. I'm happy to report that if you don't have, or if you don't use, an SD card slot on your computer, this page also has clear instructions for transferring the file using a card reader, or, like me, a USB cable. Once you've read those instructions, head to your downloads folder because it's time to transfer the file to the SD card by one of those three methods. And here's the second point I want to make, which I know a lot of people are getting wrong. You don't transfer the zip file to your card. You have to extract the firmware update file from it and transfer that. Using Windows 10, I right click on the zip file and then click extract all from the drop down menu. Now things might work a little differently on your computer, but just make sure the file you copy is the extracted BIN file and not the whole zip file. So when you've successfully loaded and copied the new firmware file, go back to your instructions and click to the second page which tells you how to complete the update now that the file's been saved onto your SD card. Just be sure to follow those instructions step by step without skipping anything, and you should now be good to go with version 2.4. Now on to my first impressions, and I have to stress these might seem a bit superficial since I've only taken the camera out twice since I updated the firmware, but a few people have been asking so for what it's worth, here are my experiences so far. I have to say that the first thing I found that I really appreciate was the new red frame that appears when you're recording video. The old version showed a little red circle when you were recording and that's all. Now I've never claimed to be a genius, and one mistake I've made more than once is to start recording by accident without noticing that little red circle coming on. So then when the action starts, I'd press the red button, and I would actually stop the recording instead of starting it. So for me this is a handy feature, and here's how you set it up. In part 3 of the menu, select Monitor Display. On page 7 out of 8, you can now find the red Record Frame Indicator heading. All you have to do is turn that on, and now it's much easier to tell when you're recording and when you're not. This is one of those features I didn't know I needed until it was there, and now I'm really happy to have it. Now on to autofocus, and on the same day I updated my firmware I also had a portrait shoot, and I want to thank my friend Selena yet again for helping me test out some of the features. We started with some video using AFC and the area mode that used to be called Face Eye Body Detection, but is now called Human Detect or Human Animal Detect, depending on your selection. Before we look at the new clip, here's a sample from a test I did using the old version a few weeks earlier. As you can see, it's pretty good. It's accurate most of the time, with just a hint of a slip up when Selena changes angles quickly or turns it back. I wanted to show you this because when you get used to something new, you very quickly forget how things were before. So now let's take a look at a more demanding test using the new firmware. To this one. Okay, oh hang on. Go! Walk fast, move to the left and right. Yep. So come up close, stop about there, look down away from the camera, yep, that's great, it, it does actually seem to be moving a lot faster, 
So uh, come in a little closer and close your eyes. Look down. Okay, go a bit further back. Okay. Um, okay, now move to this way a step. Yep. Now close your eyes. Turn around. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that's just a good demonstration of... I think you'll agree that version 2.4 is just that bit faster and more responsive. You can see the difference in how quickly it switches from one eye to the other as Selena changes angles, and how it really doesn't falter if she closes her eyes or turns her back. I'm confident that the new firmware has taken a good system and made it even better. Next we did a similar test using AFC and Human Detect for shooting stills. Note that I'm using front button focus so I have to refocus after each press. Also I'm shooting in burst mode so I get a couple of shots with each press of the button. So in a moment when I show you the results I'll just show you every second photo. Yep, start. Come right in close. Come right up close. Okay. Now I'll do the worst thing a photographer can do to a model and show you that whole set without weeding out the bad ones. The shutter speed could have been a bit faster so you might notice a tiny bit of motion blur on the more active shots. But apart from totally losing it just one time, the focus was pretty much spot on. Now it also occurs to me while putting this together that if I was using continuous back button focus, my success rate might have been 100%. So perhaps it's time after all these years that I force myself to finally embrace back button focus. I guess you can keep an eye out for future videos to see how that little thought bubble turns out. Our final test that day was for something quite new where they've added human and animal detect to the single area focus mode. This was something quite unexpected and I really just had to give it a try to see how it worked. First here's a reminder of the old system and you can see with that single area focus the camera was only going to focus in that spot. Now let's see what happens when we add human detect in AFC. You can see at first that with Selena over to the side the focus stays in the centre just like before. But as she gets close to the focus point, not necessarily right on it but close to it, the focus will find her and once it does it will track her as long as I hold my finger down. But if she moves too far from that focus point it loses her and goes back to behaving like normal single area focus. Notice that when my finger isn't on the button it will show a yellow rectangle to let me know it's found a human subject and then when I half press to focus it turns green to let me know that I'm locked on. We did the same test again using AFS and as you would expect it behaves in exactly the same way except that now when I half press to focus the focus will lock in place so as Selena moves the focus doesn't move with her. So what we have here is a bit of a hybrid of two different focus options. I can see potential in particular making use of the G9's excellent ability to find the eyes of a subject but I'll have to do a lot more shooting to see whether I really get much use out of this or if I just stick with that terrific human animal detect mode that I featured earlier. And now I want to thank Selena one more time for doing me this favour and since I showed you all those dodgy photos early on I want to end this part of the video with one of our best photos from that afternoon. Okay now onto some birds and unfortunately unlike the portraits now I don't have a cooperative subject that will patiently pose while I'm filming what's happening on the back of the camera. So I can't really show you the work in progress, just the results. I went back to my favourite location for birds in flight but unfortunately the birds weren't very active that day so I had precious few opportunities. All of these examples were taken using the human animal tracking mode in AFC. So starting with some video, the least exciting video for me was probably the most interesting. Here the bird is partially hidden behind some foliage. With the previous version I found the focus was often confused by interference like this and it would end up focusing in totally the wrong place. Here though, despite the wind blowing the leaves in front of the bird more often than not, the focus frame stayed locked on the bird and for the most part it was successful in focusing on the bird, not the leaves. And the still photos bear that out. You can see the camera managed to go straight past the leaves and lock onto the osprey. With birds in flight the camera also did a pretty admirable job even when the bird was a long way off. 
Once again, these were all shot in AFC using animal detection. Now, in the past, when the subject was this far away, the autofocus often struggled to find it and stay on it. Here, for the most part, it seemed to do a much better job. And remember, it's battling not just a fast-moving and fairly erratic subject, but also my very shaky handheld camera skills with a 400mm lens. There was one notable example where the camera lost the bird, but on the plus side it managed to fight its way back. My experience in the past was that if it lost focus, I may as well stop recording, because once the focus was gone, it was gone for good. Now, to prevent people getting motion sickness from watching any more of my shaky video, I'm going to finish with some still shots taken on that same afternoon, once again using AFC and animal detection. First up this shot, with an osprey way in the distance, backlit and very hazy in the salt mist coming off the ocean. This is exactly the type of situation where the old version might have had some issues, but in this case it found the bird with no trouble at all. When it came to birds in flight, I honestly didn't have enough good opportunities to call this a proper test. But for the few chances I did have, I missed a few but I got some really good shots including some of the sharpest bird in flight shots I've taken for a long time. So even though my sample size so far is very small, I'm confident that the improvements to the autofocus in version 2.4 are real and significant, and I'm actually pretty excited to see what it does for my success rate into the future. And now for my crowning glory for this week. You'll remember early on I said it might be time for me to get serious about back button focus. Well, in the time it's taken me to make this video, I found some time to get out and try some birds in flight using AFC and Animal Detect combined with back button focus. So consider these last two shots a sneak preview of what comes next, and remember, you're never too old to learn. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.